You have seen me remove the outdrive and the engine from the boat, and in today's video, I'm gonna be revealing why I removed it. So don't go anywhere, let's get right into it. Now I gotta say, there's actually some good guesses that came in about what was going on with my engine. And Fowl's 123 was hot on the case. He had four guesses, and one of them is actually correct. But it wasn't those crankshaft bearings, and it wasn't an oil gallery blocked, and it's not a bad lifter. It was a small leak on the oil pan gasket. So now I'm going to walk you through where the leak is, how bad it is, and why it's happening, and finally, how I'm going to try to fix it. So I realized there was an oil leak a few months back by seeing some of the oil down at the bottom of the bilge. Uh, it's just a tiny little leak here at this front corner. And no, it's not from the oil filter. It's from the oil pan gasket. You see here, I've got myself a nice little uh, bowl duct taped onto the fuel line and the engine mount there. <sighs> I know some of y'all are probably jumping to conclusions like, oh, I knew that boy didn't know what he was doing putting that engine back together. And uh, that might still be true, but overall the engine is in good shape. It's just a minor little oil leak. And to answer how much oil is leaking out of it, to fill up the bowl you see here, which is probably around a fourth of a cup to half of a cup of oil, took around 10 hours of the engine running for regular lake use. So it's really a slow leak. It's not a huge problem, but it's annoying nevertheless, and uh, you don't want to have to have a bowl duct taped to your engine. <laughs> Now to answer the question, why is the oil leaking? And what you're looking at here is actually after I have the oil pan out, but I just wanted to show you a camera angle of up there at the front of the engine, the holes where two of the bolts go. The first thing I suspected was that maybe those bolts in that area where it was starting to leak had loosened. So I tried to tighten them up, but of course it still leaked after that, so that wasn't the problem. There really wasn't much more I could do to diagnose the problem without removing the oil pan from the engine. So that's what ultimately drove me to make the decision to remove my outdrive and remove the engine from the boat. Now with the engine out of the boat, before I can remove the oil pan, I need to go ahead and drain the oil out of it. If you've been following my boat restoration since the beginning, you might remember a year ago when I was disassembling the engine, there was a ton of water in the oil pan, which was super alarming. So hopefully this time around, we don't see water in it. And boy, let me tell you, it was a huge relief to see that there wasn't any water in the oil pan, so we were all good on that front. So we finished letting all the oil drain out into our pan, and now I'm going to go ahead and put the drain plug back in. And this is just so whenever I'm taking off the whole oil pan, I don't get a little bit of extra that drips out of that hole. But now, we're ready to go ahead and start working on getting the oil pan off. To make removing the oil pan a little bit easier, I removed this panel that covers the bottom of the flywheel just to make it easier to get the oil pan off. This was just held on by a bolt on each side. Not sure if you can see this, but the flywheel teeth actually look really good. There's no new rust formation on them. So the paint job turned out really nice there. Now to remove the oil pan itself, which is straightforward, just unscrewing all the bolts along the perimeter of it. So 
what I'm noticing here is on the bolt holes, whoop, you can kind of see right there, they used a little bit of gasket maker around where the bolts go in through these holes to help seal them. And what I'm thinking might have happened was when I was reinstalling this the first time, I didn't use any gasket maker silicone cock on this. And so I think a few of those bolt holes right here at the corner is probably where it was leaking. That's my best guess anyways. But the other thing I notice is uh, you can kind of tell here they did use some of that black gasket maker on some of the corners. You can see a little piece of it coming off right there. So I'll probably at least do that as well. I'm still sort of on the fence to whether or not I want to take the gasket maker and go all the way along the entire uh, gasket or not. But we'll see. Other than that, there's no big chunks in here, no metal flying around, no water, so that's all good. For the most part, everything down under here seems to be in pretty good condition. So I went ahead and hopped on Amazon and ordered some Permatex Gasket Maker, and as always, I'll include a link to this in the video description below. Now before trying out that gasket maker and reinstalling the oil pan, I went ahead and drained out the rest of the oil and also just went through and wiped down the whole mating surface where the gasket goes over to make sure the gasket maker adheres well. I also went ahead and cleaned off any oil residue that was on the gasket as well. Now something that I find interesting about these oil pan gaskets is that on all the bolt holes they have these little metal washers that are in the gasket itself and I noticed on the corner where the leak was happening one of those washers was almost trying to tear out of the gasket so I'm wondering if maybe that was part of the issue that led to the leak. So after I had the oil pan and gasket ready to go, as I was getting it into position I sort of stopped for a second and realized this was about to be a pain in the butt to try and put this on with the engine in the air right side up. It would make my life a whole lot easier if I had the engine upside down, but to do that I need to put it on the engine stand, so that's what I decided to do. So before turning the engine upside down, I decided it was probably a good idea to drain all the water out of the block. And boy, let me tell you, there was a lot. I think in total it was probably over a gallon of water inside that bad boy. Now the only downside about putting the engine on the engine stand is that in order to do so, you have to remove the flywheel cover and then the drive shaft coupler that's bolted to the flywheel and the flywheel itself in order to get it bolted to the engine stand. So it's not a huge deal, but it does add more time to the process of doing this. So now with the engine upside down, I was ready to go ahead and bust out that gasket maker. Now since the gasket I'm going to be using is still the same as before, and I knew it only leaked in the one corner, that's mainly where I focused putting the gasket maker onto. Another thing I wasn't 100% sure about was whether to put the gasket maker on top of the gasket or below the gasket. 
or on both sides. So to be safe, I just went ahead and put it on both sides. But if you think it should be one side or the other, be sure to let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. I also added a bit of the gasket maker around some of those bolt holes to help them make a better seal. After that, I went ahead and put the bolts back into the oil pan, but I only tightened them down to finger tightness at first, so that way we can wait an hour for that gasket maker to harden some, and then came back afterwards to finish torquing the bolts down. So that's pretty much it. Now to find out if this is actually going to fix the leak or not, obviously I'm going to have to run the engine but I'm going to try to do that while the engine's out of the boat. And this is actually a great opportunity for another video because there's been a lot of people who have requested me to show how to hook up the engine to run it while it's outside of the boat. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. But that's going to do it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you want, and I'll see you next time.